is Michelle Cooper and I'm going to paint some cherry blossoms today. Actually a cherry tree. This set that I have right here is the Prima set, the Tropicals set, and this is what they look like when they come in the set and then I've rearranged them according to the way that I like here. I've prepared my paper to fit onto a CD cover. I'm making a postcard size, so I've taped it across about an eighth of an inch so that it covers the border all the way around. And then you just fasten it onto the support, which is your CD or DVD cover. It's waterproof, light, and it's rigid. The Prima watercolor set that I am using doesn't come with names but numbers for their pigments. So I'm going to be using the two reds, number 19 and 22, and then the one that looks like burnt sienna, number 24. I'll add that to some of the purple, number 20, for the tree trunk as well. And then very rarely I'll be using, oh, just a little bit of the number 16 green, number 18 and number 13. I'm going to start out with a number 12 round watercolor brush. It's synthetic hair. Get it in the water and make some really pale washes from the two red colors in the Prima set. This paper is at pretty much a perpendicular straight up and down angle here. So the watercolor coming off of this big brush is going to create a bead at the bottom of the brush stroke. And as long as it doesn't drip too much, that doesn't bother me. Now I'm going to add some of this color that looks like burnt sienna to make the tree trunk because this is going to be a whole tree rather than a branch or just a few blossoms. I have a lot of water in my brush here so that it'll start out with a pale tone. And if this is a little nerve-wracking to you to try to draw directly with the brush, you can pencil in the shape of the tree trunk first and then come back and paint on top. See, this is what I love about watercolor hair. You put a wet wash in Add a little bit of concentrated color on the tip of the brush there and then it just kind of just blends right in sort of bleeds across the watery part the shape holds because you're painting wet over dry so the rest of the paper is pretty much dry except where you've already painted and you can use the fine tip on a very large brush to make very small and narrow lines for the branches and the limbs. Make your brush thirsty by dabbing it off on a sponge and then take it to the painting to lift off the excess bead of water. So this is about all I can do with this big number 12 round brush. So I'm going to switch it out for my smaller one. There's a number six round travel brush here. See the description below for the names of the brushes and the manufacturers. I want to create a windblown look to this tree and the smaller branches come out better if I use a little bit smaller brush here. Pre-wetting the area and then dropping in a little bit of concentrated color from the tip of the brush.
So now I want to darken this burnt sienna looking color. I have a custom color here that's cobalt blue that I'm adding in now, but you can use either one of the blues to that burnt sienna looking color there in the Prima set and it will do the same thing. Just getting darker shadow colors and showing some contour on the tree trunk and the branches. Letting it blend in wet into wet. I think I need a little variety. Maybe add some of this manganese blue here too, just so it's not all the same color everywhere. plant this in the ground. Add a little bit of water at the base so the color can blend in a little more. Change the color a little bit with this yellowy green. Maybe some of this darker green in here and let some of these colors blend wet into wet all at the base of the tree here. I'm going to add a little bit of the pinky color for fallen blossoms. That would be caused by the wind blowing the tree so hard. And maybe a few little spring flowers at the base of the tree for balance. Add a bit of that purple for a few little shadows, a little bit of variety in these flowers at the bottom here. Now we have to start developing the foliage on the tree here. Large shapes of masses of blossoms and then a little texture here and there on the edges for the individual blossoms flying off in the wind. And we don't want to get too boring with the same red all the time, so change out to a little bit of a warmer red, and then that just makes the whole thing that much richer. Alternating, just keeping one of those reds as the dominant. I'll add some of this purple in here right on top of some of these other colors here for darker accents, especially in the trunk. Maybe up here, especially 
I think we could use them in the branches and the limbs of the tree. A few more accents in the dark area. Now let's see this foreground here. Since the painting is about the blossoming cherry tree and not about the grass on the ground, we'll just add a variety of different colors wet into wet here to give a tiny bit of interest, but not to take away from the main subject, which is the wind blown blossoms on the tree. Now, while this is still wet, I could switch out my brush for the aquarelle brush. It has a beveled end on it and emboss a few brush strokes here, creating a crease in the paper and making it look like some darker grasses. Now the wind has come up and I want to use a spatter technique practice it a little bit in my palette here by tapping my watercolor brush and that way I get some random spots here to indicate windblown blossoms flying everywhere. It would look too mechanical if you try to dot all those in one by one. Now you can take that embossing idea by signing your name, pressing hard with a sharp pencil, then come back in with some wet paint and it will sink down into the crease made by the pencil and help your signature to look like it belongs to the rest of the painting. I thought I might use my toothbrush for some fine spatter and the hog's bristle brush for some medium spatter, but my sable watercolor brush seems to have done all of it by itself, so I don't need to use those other brushes. I wanted to be sure everything got dry, so I could put some darks here and maybe in here. I still feel like I need a few more dark accents and it's easier to achieve that once everything is totally dry so that you can get the darkest colors you're looking for. Okay, we've let everything dry completely and I'm ready to take off the border tape and see what the whole painting looks like without it. Yes, I like the way that turned out. So now I could make this into a postcard and I would never send it through the mail just like a regular postcard. I would put it in an envelope. So you can buy these five by seven envelopes that it would fit in. That's one way that you could present your painting. Or you could get a mat and fit the painting into a mat and then put it into a frame. Or you could stand it on an easel. Whether you keep it for yourself or give it to a friend, I hope you'll try this lesson and enjoy happy memories of cherry blossom time in the spring. Thanks for watching. See you next time.